Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Nong here, and um, welcome back to another video. So I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but Bungie cancelled their stream. The stream that they're gonna have today, where they're gonna show off some gear, and they were gonna have a quote-unquote fashion show. Yep, that's cancelled. And instead, we got a blog post. I'm talking about something more important, like actual meaningful changes that will improve the game. So that's what we're doing today, we're gonna be looking at this blog post that Bungie just posted, and we're basically just gonna see what they say. So, let's talk about the state of Destiny 2. Let's just skip the introduction and stuff like that, and let's just get straight into the upcoming updates. So they're actually talking about two updates. Right now we got details mostly for the December update, but they're promising an update also on January. So, let's just talk about the December update since it's the thing that will come on the 7th, oh actually, my bad, on the 5th when Curse of Osiris is released. And then another patch the following week on the 12th. So both the updates want to improve and set the following goals. Deepen the rewards for advanced players. So people like you and me that may play the game a lot and we just want better rewards. Provide more player control over obtaining rewards. Make shards useful, thank god. And provide general quality fixes whenever possible. So the first thing that we have here for the December update are the Masterworks. The new Masterworks weapons will be added December 12th. Legendary weapons will drop or be upgraded to become Masterworks versions. Masterworks will have a few advantages over the baseline legendary weapons that will track and display the number of kills with that weapon, generate orbs for your allies on multi kills, add a weapon stat bonus that are selected randomly from a small pool and that are re rollable. So you get a nice stat bonus, and that stat bonus is random. And if you don't like the bonus that you have, you could re roll it. Masterworks will draw from any source of legendary weapons for any characters that are above 250 power level. In case you don't get a Masterworks weapon that you like, you can dismantle it and you will get materials that can help you upgrade your existing legendary weapons into Masterwork weapons. Raid and Trials of the Land weapons will have a very high chance to be Masterworks. So if you're looking for some Masterwork weapons, the Raid and Trials of the Night might be the way to go. Alright, so now let's move on to the ornaments. And the ornaments will actually come in. December 5th with the DLC. Ornaments will be added for some of the existing armor sets to provide some more visual customization without losing the shaders. These ornaments will be acquired by completing a specific challenge for each set. And are permanently unlock account wide, kind of like the exotic ornaments that if you apply it to one of the weapons, then you will always have it in the other ones. They can be applied to the base pieces that you already collected, or if you don't have them, now you can unlock them from the vendors. The armor that will have ornaments in 2 is the Vanguard faction armor, the Crucible faction armor, the Charles the Nine faction armor, Iron Banner, Dead Orbit, Future War Cult, New Monarchy, and the new Raid layer, the Eater of Worlds. Now we have a couple more things that will be coming December 12th. The first one will be that faction weapons and armor will be unlocked and will be able to be purchased with legendary shards. Uh, they have a nice little picture here that shows that. You can pay a couple of legendary shards, a couple of tokens, and you could get whatever you want. All five armor slots will always be present, and the weapon will rotate each week. Another thing for the 12th is a few changes to Sir. Sir will now have a new engram that you can purchase one each week, and this new engram is called the Fade Engram. You can use your legendary shards to buy a Fade Engram, and it will decrypt into a weapon or just an exotic that you don't have in your collection. They also added a simpler trio coins that boost exotic drop rates from any source for 4 hours. And this is not like the Destiny 1 trio coins, you don't have to activate this one each time before a boss. This one you just activate it and then you have better drops or better exotic drops for 4 hours. They will cost legendary shards and there won't be a limit to how many you can get, how many of the trio coins. And the last thing that we have is just some general investment stuff. On December 5th, Banshee will have some updates to the weapon and armor mods, allowing you to dismantle some of the rare mods that you may have, and they will dismantle into gunsmith materials, and they will also have a chance to turn into some legendary quality mod components, so you can purchase some legendary mods. They are also making a change, in case you are looking for a specific legendary mod, Banshee will have a selection of legendary mods that you can buy, you can use some of your mod components and some of your legendary shards, so it won't just be all random now. You can just choose whichever legendary mod you may want, although they all won't be there at once, they will rotate daily. Alright, so there's a couple more things for September 5th, uh, like players being able to purchase legendary engrams from 
the Crypt Dark, Master Rahul. He will be selling legendary ingrams for legendary shards. And also, there's a couple of changes affecting reputation tokens. Daily challenges will have reputation token awards used across the board. So you will no longer just get one type of reputation token from completing the daily challenges. Case chess will also offer different rewards and now have a guaranteed, at minimal, a payout of some reputation tokens. Yes, two tokens and a blue. So yeah, I think that they're gonna have to improve the case chess a bit more. Extracts will also drop a larger number of Vanguard reputation tokens, so you won't feel that it takes forever to just level up the Vanguard by doing strikes. Common quality destination sources tokens will have their drop rates increase to 100% and value per token increase as well as 50% for common quality tokens and 250 for rare quality tokens. So you know those things that you find while in any destination and then you go turn them in to one of the vendors of that planet and they give you almost no reputation? Well yeah, that's increasing by 100% on the rare ones and the blue ones will increase by 250% so that should make them a little more valuable to balance some of these changes they're gonna increase the reputation required to get an engram and it's gonna increase by 37% on destinations and it's gonna increase by 50% on the gunsmith since now used by the leading mods you can also get some gunsmith parts the leviathan raid tokens will be redeemed at benedict immediately after obtaining a token instead of requiring a full raid clear before unlocking so even if you haven't finished the raid, you can basically use redeem your tokens against some ranged weapons or some armor. Then they have a statement with the launch of Curse of Osiris and the beginning of Season 2, you can expect a full pseudo patch notes that will document all of the changes outlined above, as well as some additional sandbots and gameplay changes the team is making to improve Destiny 2. We will soon be providing preload and launch day details, as well as a roadmap for our Season 2 content, which includes the dawning in mid-December. So yeah, dawning's coming mid-December. They're also going to show us some of the roadmap for whatever we're going to have in Season 2 soon. Then they have an entire section dedicated to the XP mechanics. You know, and that whole thing about throwing in XP. Yeah, that thing. They basically just talk about, you know, that they turned it off. And now they want to bring the XP rewards in line with player expectations. Yes, no apology. I'm not even surprised. It is Bungie after all. And the last thing that we have in this update is you something about the future. Going onward, we plan to continue this dialogue as openly and frequently as possible. We'll see how long that lasts since last time they said that we're gonna have more frequent updates and basically got the same thing. This will be an ongoing process, but one that we are committed to. Again, which is what I said a couple seconds earlier. This week we'll be publishing a new episode of the Bungie Podcast where we will sound off on the current state of Dusty 2 how we think about our communication challenges, and what it takes to update the game in the wild. You'll be able to listen to this podcast on both Apple and Android devices. Thank you for playing, and for being passionate about the Destiny 2 experience, and for working with us to continuously improve our game and studio communication. I'm a bit happy that at least they said, hey, you know our communication? Yeah, that kind of sucks. And yeah, they're right. The, the communication is pretty terrible. Probably some of the worst I've seen. But they're saying that they will try to improve and they will try to update us on upcoming stuff a lot more regularly. And that's basically all I would want. Even if we know that some updates are a bit far away, just some acknowledgement that there is a problem with something and that Bungie is working on it would go a long way. Transparency with the community is what we need and we got some pretty nice stuff with this vlog i actually link it in the description below since i didn't go over everything i just went over the december thing there's a couple of things that i didn't cover since those are going to be part of the january update but if you want to go check it out for yourself the link will be in the description below but yeah actually we like a lot of these changes being able to purchase gear is good uh, and engram that helps you you know not get those same goddamn exotic weapons that you keep getting Maybe I'll finally be able to get that goddamn tractor kind, right? <laughs> but yeah, this is what I want. These are the type of updates that I want. I don't want to know what gear we're going to get, what weapons we're going to get. We'll find that out when the release happens. I want to know about those goddamn quality of life changes. So, I'm actually pretty happy with this update. If they continue to do updates like this, going on, 
into the future, then the game will definitely get better. But if they go back to not having any communication with the community, I don't even need to say it. We all know what's going to happen. But only the future will tell if Bungie will go in this direction of being more open with the community or if they will go back to their old ways. But anyways, let me know in the comments below what do you guys think about these changes? Do you think they are good for the game? Which one do you think is the best? Or which one do you think is the worst? The one that needs even more improvements on it. But anyways, I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care everyone.